Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 7 of FTB Interactions. The name of today's game is Machines. We are now in the LV era, so it's time to make the LV machines. Um, the ones listed here are some of the most important ones, there may be a couple more that we need, but before we can even get into that we need to actually make power, you know, um, Greg Tech power, and to do that we need a steam turbine. But the steam turbine requires circuits. So circuits kind of represent like your the core of your technological progression in Greg Tech. It's, I guess you could say it's either that or voltage level, but they're kind of uh, related. Anyways, the quest to make circuits recommends we make a lot at a time just for our own sanity. So uh, I'm going to take that to heart. We, let's see, these circuits are interchangeable with each other, but the like this one is cheaper to make once you have an assembler and some other supplies like a... Uh, polyethylene but until you get there you have to make the integrated circuit so this is our first circuit looking at this recipe it's uh, a lot of like wires mostly just wires which is kind of unfortunate because right now making wires is pretty expensive um let's see so later on we can make wires these recipes will accept fine copper like the fine wires which are four to one with regular wires and i think it's eight to one with ingots yeah so one ingot makes eight fine wires whereas for now because we have to both use a regular wire and we have to cut it from sheets it's uh three ingots makes two sheets so three ingots make two wires yikes there's like a there's a significant improvement to be had but you know that's the stage we're at now so um looking at this wood planks how do i make this compressing wood pulp okay um yeah for now we have to make it just with our steam machines which is somewhat unfortunate but uh i guess time to get crafting i'll see what bottlenecks i run into one problem i've noticed is that every time i restart my game the uh the conduits here disconnect from the hatch and i don't actually have a wrench to reconnect them so i have to actually just like break and replace them each time which is a little i don't know annoying i guess um but not the end of the world I think we won't be using this uh, coke oven for long. We'll get the what the like the advanced coke oven, which I hope doesn't have this problem. Um, I mean, like the machine doesn't cross trunk borders or anything, right? Like, I mean, I guess nothing in a quadrant can cross trunk borders, but like the entire conduit network's in a trunk border. I don't know why it breaks. Oh well. I'm gonna need a lot of wool to cover my cables with, so uh, oh, can I only have one at a time? Darn. Uh, I came out here with a piggy backpack to grab some sheep. So I think the way it works is... How do I... I see. So if I unequip the backpack, it drops the sheep. Alright. Yeah, I can even teleport home with it. Oh, I should have brought... I should have set one of my crystals there. So I could teleport both ways. Um, anyways, I'm going to build a little... Uh, oops, sorry, sheep. Pen to hold these sheep in. Welcome to your new home. I'll go bring your friends soon enough. Don't you worry. All right, I grabbed eight sheep from that uh, pasture. They're all white sheep as far as I can tell. Maybe that one's like the gray color, but I don't know. Uh, no, I think it's just the lighting. Anyways, um, but I need black wool for those uh, cables. Thankfully, we live above water, so I'm just going to go kill some squid. It can be a little hard to hunt squid at night because you can't see. And, uh, I actually have a night vision buff right now, and I got it from drinking... Uh, liquid starlight. So take a bucket of this, put it in the world, get your straw, and drink it. And it gives you a five minute night vision buff. And it looks like, hey, look, those are... Uh, those are wolves. Those are definitely not squid. Oh, what's that? I haven't seen that before. Is that a dungeon entrance? Hold on. Been like right by it this whole time. It is most definitely a dungeon entrance, and it most definitely does not have a ladder. So I'm not about to go down there because I can't come back up if I do. But uh, cool, I guess we know it's here for later. And then we can dye our sheep so that they just natively produce black wool. I'm pretty sure that's how it works, right? You, you dye them and then, and then their genetics change and they produce black wool. We can even breed them. And because now they're genetically black wool sheep, their children will be black wool sheep. Don't ask questions. Oh, baby sheep. Baby sheep, dude. Okay, I'll stop. 
Ha! I mined out an entire coal vein. More or less. There's some pieces I couldn't mine because they're in the obsidian. Cheaters. I uh, kind of forgot that sheep have to eat grass to regrow their their wool. So uh, here we go. Transformed it all into grass. Hey, steam compressor. Can you hurry it up a little? The last thing I'm waiting for. I looked at the recipe in a time in a bottle. We are so close. But I can't make lapis plates until I have an LV cutting machine. We are so close to not having to painfully wait for these machines. The moment we've all been waiting for, circuits. I mean, the moment I've been waiting for, I guess I've edited out all the crafting in between. It's uh, taken me about an hour to craft these between mining and waiting for machines and all. But anyways, now that we have circuits, um, we can move on to the next bit of microcrafting. There's a lot of red there. Let's uh, do motors. So motors are... Oh, nope, let's rewind a bit. Let's do... The polarizer. Wait a second. The polarizer needs LV. How do I power the polarizer to make motors? Can I make these by like rubbing redstone on? There has to be another way to make this, right? Ah. Uh, ah, okay. I can do the iron version with redstone. Never mind. I don't need a polarizer yet. So uh, I guess next up I need to make a bunch of motors. The quest here recommends, uh, does this reward me? All right, I'll take these rewards. But the quest here recommends I make 40 motors. So I guess I'll do at least 40. These weren't quite as bad because I already had all the tin and copper plates made. I guess I made a lot of extras earlier, but oof, it hurts to, to make wires one at a time. Anyways, um, motors, which means we can almost Make the turbine and aha steam basic steam turbine so i think this outputs one amp or uh yeah one amp at 32 volts um and it consumes how much fuel let's see consumes 64 millibuckets per tick huh we're gonna need to make more steam aren't we because right now this thing produces High pressure steam boiler. Wait. Steam lava. No, this one. Steam coal boiler produces 15 millibuckets a tick. So we need a 4 to 1 ratio of boilers to turbines. I made four more high pressure coal boilers, except they're still powered by sticks. Uh, apparently, the limit of a barrel is 64 stacks. So uh, 64 stacks is at least a couple hours worth of fuel like i think one boiler might go through four or five stacks an hour so um yeah it's plenty of fuel i just have to remember to refill it from time to time and then let's see which way does this face i don't know which side's output i assume this dot is the output i guess we'll find out um just hook up our pipes because of how quickly this thing consumes steam, there's little point in actually having a buffer because any buffer you have will just get, you know, devoured, right? Like if I had a, what is this, 256 uh, millibucket buffer, we get half an EU per steam. So this is like 128, um, 128k EU buffer, except in steam form. It's not really worth it. Anyways, uh, it looks like it does automatically stop producing when it's full. That's nice. And it can output energy too. I guess what type of cable do we use? So I know the quest book has a thing for the lossless cables, but the LV lossless cable is blue steel. Um, and I don't think we can make blue steel yet. For one, we need a wire mill to even make it into cables, but how do you make blue steel? All right, that doesn't look too bad. It's lapis or lazarite dust with steel ingots um, in a alloy smelter. So I guess we can we can make blue steel ingots. We just can't turn them into a can't turn them into cables quite yet. So for now, I'll just use some kind of lossy cable. And uh, I think the first machine we make will actually be the wire mill because the wire mill makes all this crafting so much more resource efficient. So um. What's here? We'll use a 
tin cable for now because it, it's uh it only loses i mean we only need one amp and it only loses one volt per block aha uh, because this is a covered variant it doesn't kill us for touching it since we batch crafted our circuits and our motors and even our machine holes because we have a handful left over uh crafting these machines now is very easy it's just a matter of grabbing the materials out of storage and making it all right so with the wire mill um this as i mentioned before turns ingots into what into cables much more efficiently haha -ha. nice so let's start by making those blue steel cables so that we can run as many cables as we like without having to worry about loss if I recall, lapis ore is one of the funnest ores to process because it explodes into like a million ores, right? Yeah, from four lapis ore, I got 39 crushed, and that's without fortune on our hammer. Uh, on the other hand, that means it's very easy to get lapis dust. Unfortunately, it's more difficult to turn those lapis dust into actual lapis pieces. But anyways, crush it, crush it again. Lags a bunch. I guess we don't have fast workbench wash this i recently discovered that you can wash an entire stack at once it's made washing a lot easier i used to do them piece by piece and have to refill this cauldron all the time and smelt this with uh steel right this blue steel stuff actually looks pretty good in addition to being lossless wires it also makes tool heads like the uh pick at, or the axe head here it's 2800 durability with efficiency um I wonder if any of these other ones are worth it. What does it do on a hammer? Is it also efficiency? Yeah, I might use it for some tools then. Cool, and it, I mean, it's basically just steel. Anyways, for now, I'm turning it into wires. Haha, -ha, wires. Uh, this stuff is also four amps per um, wire, so we don't, you know, we only have to go up to four X wire to transfer, say, 16 amps, which is nifty. Um, I assume, yeah, we can cover it the same way or Later, when we get an assembler, we can cover it with uh, with rubber or all these fancy rubber variants. The next machine will be the bending machine. So the bending machine can turn ingots into plates at a one to one ratio, which is you know slightly better than our uh, our forge hammer, right? Which is three to two. So it just means that we get to stretch our resources a little bit further. Um, I'll place them next to each other, I guess. Well, no, it's lossless. This pack is also configured that you can uh, pick up machines with without a wrench. It's like, wow, why couldn't IC2 figure this out? Our power production at the moment, though, can only support running one machine at a time. So if I, say, try to make bronze plates in the bending machine, uh, all plates are on configuration zero on the circuit, which is convenient. Um, and red alloy wires in the wire mill will notice that this machine runs out of power because our turbine only generates one amp and this machine consumes basically one amp, right? If we look at it, it takes, oh, it takes one amp because I have uh, overclocking enabled. If I turn off overclocking, we'll notice the machine slows down, but now it only consumes eight EU a tick, which means... At 8 EU a tick, uh, there is, it only consumes one quarter of an amp, which actually means that there is enough leftover energy that we do get to run both machines at a time. Mm. How fancy. Um, this is how much? 24 EU a tick. So actually, conveniently, these two together use exactly the 32 EU a tick that our turbine generates. I guess now is as good a time as any to talk about overclocking and the way recipes work in Greg Tech. So, whenever you look at a recipe that's done in a GregTech machine, it has a voltage um, or an energy usage. If it's under 8, it's ULV. If it's under uh, 32, it's LV. And then 128 for medium voltage. Basically, each tier is times 4 the previous one. What you can do is, if you're processing a recipe in a machine of higher tier than the recipe, then it is eligible for overclocking. So for example, this uh, red alloy wire here, right? It's a ULV or ultra low voltage recipe, but we're using a LV machine. There are no ULV machines. So what that means is that if we uh, enable overclocking, that will allow the recipe to use four times as much power, so four times the voltage effectively, um, and that means that here, this recipe, instead of using 8 EU a tick, we'll use 32. 
and it increases its speed. The speed increase formula is a little complicated, but it'll overclock as many times as possible t- until it catches up to the current here, right? So ULV overclock to LV is one time. Um, if you go to MV, it's two times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Overclocking can only happen if you can multiply the energy usage by four and not go up to the next tier. So like, for example, here we're making iron plates. Um, I need slot in my inventory. If we were to take these iron plates, and uh, which is 24 a tick, if we multiply that by 4, right, that's over 32. So this recipe is not eligible to be overclocked in this machine. That means this button does nothing, at least for this specific recipe. Cool. Um, and yeah, that's the gist of it, I guess. Uh, generally speaking, if you can, the idea is if you can afford the power cost, overclocking is great. It makes the recipes run very fast. Um, like if I were to make this in a, you know, in uh, the higher tier bending machine or metal bender, if I like was using an IV metal bender, this recipe would take, you know, like one or two ticks per plate. So um, that's one way that Greg Tech encourages you to use higher tier machines. It's by making the recipes run extremely quick in them. Anyways, now I'm just going to set up all the hoppers so that we can batch process tasks here. Uh, since we can make plates more easily now, I'm going to just start using these regular hoppers so I can right-click them. Whereas these uh, wooden hoppers, right, you can't right-click them to see what order things are queued. The next machine I want to make is the lathe. The lathe mostly just makes rods. So uh, out of ingots, it makes rods. But when we make them by hand, we get one rod per ingot. When we make it this way, we get two. Wow. I think you can also make the long rods. But uh, the long rods don't get used very often. Meh. The next two machines to make, the assembly machine and cutting machine, both need conveyor modules. So conveyors take rubber, um, at least until you... No, they still take rubber to make in the assembler. So we have to make rubber. To make rubber, we need fluid rubber, which is made from... A chemical or made in a chemical reactor rather from sulfur and raw rubber pulp the raw rubber pulp is extracted from sticky resin all right so we're extracting sticky resin i accidentally made a second extractor because i forgot that i made one already so now we have two of these for some reason i'll probably never use it but um i guess that also means we need a chemical reactor huh we're going to need a lot of chemical reactors throughout this playthrough that's for sure I'm having one hell of a time trying to figure out how to get the sulfur, though. So I see that sulfur is a secondary product from pulverizing of various bunches of things. However, the LV pulverizer doesn't give secondary products. You, you need a MV one before you get any secondaries. Um, it is a primary product for pulverizing sulfur, but sulfur ore doesn't appear to spawn in any vein. At least none of like these here include sulfur ore. I click through every one to check it, so... Uh, unless I missed it, there is no sulfur vein. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit at a loss for where sulfur is supposed to come from. I guess I have to, probably not centrifuge, you know, maybe electrolyzing something. Ah, this is it. Oh, that's MV. Cinnabar. Do I have cinnabar? I do have cinnabar. Okay, so I guess I need an electrolyzer to get sulfur from cinnabar, or I'm sure there's other options. Cobaltite. Nope, that's MV. But yeah, it looks like there's... Okay, so yeah, that's that's what it is. I need a electrolyzer. Uh, perfect. Alright, after much macerating, let's see what I do. Macerate, and then wash it, and then electrolyze it. We were able to uh, secure some sulfur. So combine that with the pulp. Now this creates liquid rubber. I got some bars at from the quest reward, but I think then we have to turn this liquid rubber into, uh, I need it in plate form for these. Yeah. So that's done in, I mean, I could cast them into ingots and then hammer them into plates, but, uh, it's easier. I think if I make the fluid solidifier, assuming this, Ooh, this takes pumps. Okay. I can do pumps. All we have to do is move our liquid rubber from here over to here. Right now I'm doing it by hand because uh, it'll allow us to more easily reuse this, these machines for other purposes. 
and it'll turn them into sheets. Uh, we appear to be just short on energy. Yeah, I'm running the wire mill and I guess not the metal better, just the wire mill. But uh, we're just a bit short on energy because, well, we only have one generator. We should look at uh, upgrading our power generation pretty soon. Putting that rubber to work, a basic cutting machine. So this can make certain plates that uh, cannot be made from... Oh, there's a lot of recipes. Well, uh, it can make some plates that can't be made in the metal vendor, like uh, the lapis plate. Um, I knew that for our time in a bottle, but now that I think about it, I don't actually think a time in a bottle will help us much right now because we don't have... Uh, like, I can accelerate the machine, but it, they're limited by power, not by time. So I will probably not bother making that quite yet. The cutting machine also needs a lubricant. Uh, for now, I'll just give it water. Does that work? Um, but it runs more efficiently if you give it actual lubricant. So there's water. If you see, um, you know, let's look at just this. So if you lubricate with water, it takes 20 seconds. Lubricate with distilled water, it takes 13 seconds. And lubricate with lubricant, it only takes 5 seconds. Lubricant is made, can I, I guess it's in a mixer oil and a well, bunch of different recipes. I think yeah, the easiest one is creosote and redstone. Um, what's a mixer take? Can I make one of these easily? Yeah, but I'm actually out of circuits. Uh, so I guess I have to make more of these first. However, now that we have machines, like circuits are a lot easier. You know, the wires, super easy. Um, again, wires, much cheaper. Wires, it really is just wires all the way. Quickly threw together a batch of circuits again. I didn't make that many, but uh, let's go make that lubricant really quick. So it needs, oopsies, redstone and creosote. I should have a drum full of it here. Where are you? Oh, I see. If the drop happens, in, the wood can drop in a bunch of places where the vacuum chest can't get to it. All right, fine. Uh, let me fix that. Uh, there is a quest reward that takes care of that really easily from here, a advanced item collector. Um, and then I can just filter for, give me a piece of wood, for wood and that and that. All right, and then I just replace the chest with, uh, or replace the vacuum chest with the regular chest and the item collector max range because it's filtered, so I won't pick up anything else. Um, oh well, I was I, I was hoping to use that item collector for something on the farm, but I guess we'll have to revisit that. Anyways, creosote goes in here, mixy mixy, and that produces lubricant. So I can then, uh, you know, what, let's. I'm just gonna take all of our creosote and turn it into lubricant. I think um, we don't really need creosote for much else right now. And uh, one batch of lubricant lasts a long time for the cutting machine because the cutting machine doesn't really use much lubricant. Of the Greg Tech like microcrafting components, I mean, I guess these are functional too, but uh, robot arms are easily the worst. They take motors, circuits, and pistons, which take more motors. So it's like such deeply nested crafting. Thankfully, um, you know, once you batch craft the motors and circuits, it's slightly less bad i guess you could say uh anyways i need 10 let's get eight of these some carpet and some string and that should do it so two robot arms and an assembly machine the assembly machine is always like the one of the more difficult items to make at each tier so here it is um I wonder, what do we get for that quest? Soldering iron. All right, well, we're going to need soldering alloy for it, so I guess I'll take it. Um, and I guess since we need soldering alloy, I'll put it... What? Which machine? I don't have a machine that makes that. I don't have the... What's it called? Extractor? Is that what turns soldering alloy and gets back into... What melts this? Fluid extractor. Not a regular extractor. Got it. All right, let's make one of these then. All right, so a fluid extractor basically melts things. I can turn the soldering alloy ingots into soldering alloy fluid. 
which is used in the assembler to make circuits, uh, among other things. Let's see. So are we capable of making this circuit yet? I think the only thing we're missing is the integrated circuit, and this needs no. It needs a MV precision laser, and this has to be made in a uh, blast furnace. Okay, so we have a bit left before we can make the easier circuits. Um, but yeah, fluid extractor melts things. Assembly machine does seventy billion different jobs depending on what circuit is in it. And the polarizer I just made because it's like the last machine in the line here. Um, it magnetizes things. So that completes all of the necessary LV machines. Uh, these last three, I have the Steam version already, and the Steam version and the LV version are functionally identical, um, except that this one consumes power, whereas the other one consumes steam. So I'm not gonna bother making these unless I run into some reason that they become necessary. All right, so um, with I guess we can call this our infrastructure. With our infrastructure out of the way, the next big step, I think, is the blast furnace. But the blast furnace consumes a lot of power, 120 EU a tick, and uh, we don't generate that yet. So I guess the next logical step is to make more power, both so that we can power more than one machine at a time. Right now, I'm trying to power like four or five at a time, and the ones at the end of the line are like, I got no power, man. Help me. So uh, next step is power, and the step after that is a blast furnace. But I think uh, we're, we can tackle those tomorrow. So um, yep, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We got a, a lot of machines built. And uh, yeah, we'll be putting them to use soon. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.